a long class. Okay, so Chef Kenora is going to pick five lucky audience members to come on stage with her and help her cook one of her adventurous African dishes. Who is excited about that? Awesome, awesome. Okay, Chef, over to you. Okay, you come. All right, sorry guys. Okay, so you can sit, you can sit through. Some right have there. to sit here. Okay. Okay, so Chef, let us know what we're doing today. What okay, are we cooking? Okay, so today I'm making three recipes. For the starter is basil chicken soup. And for the main, I have lemongrass base fish and lemongrass alfredo sauce. And for the dessert, I have Oreo tiger nuts tart. And what I try to do is use local ingredients to create more adventurous and interesting recipes, basically. So what I do is African food, but with a twist. Right, so to start off, I'm gonna start with my starter, which is the basil chicken soup. What I'm gonna do is, can I proceed? Huh? Can I proceed? Please. Okay, great. So I have um, chopped chicken here, and I use the chicken thigh because to me, it has more flavor than the chicken breast or any part. And I use chopped boneless because I want it to be easy for you to eat, you know? So, so the next thing I'm gonna do is to add some garlic already minced garlic. Then the next, I'm gonna add ginger. This is already grated, so it's fast, because I have just one hour. Right, so next, I'm gonna add some salt, just to season. Okay, so how much salt are we doing? Because you just seem to be... That's half teaspoon, actually. Okay. okay. And the nozzle is pretty small, so yeah. I'm grabbing a ladle. Quick stir. I'm not adding water yet because I want all the ingredients to infuse, right? So if you add water, it's just gonna dilute. And I want you to start smelling what I'm talking about. All right. So this is gonna go for a couple of minutes. Then I proceed with my other ingredients. So let me check if my fire is high enough. Okay, great. That looks pretty high. Yeah, it's hot. Okay. So what I'm gonna do next is throw in an onion. I know this sounds crazy, but that's what we do, where I come from. A whole onion. Yeah. We'll blend it later, so no worries. It's <laughs> no big deal. So tomato, one. And I'm gonna add um, scotch bonnet pepper, about two. Has I anyone heard seen that before? Yeah. Okay, maybe that's just me. Really? Is it not the red pepper? Yeah. I can't pronounce the Nigerian name, but it's all good. So I'm just gonna give it a quick stir. I know you think this is weird, but trust I me, I definitely it's think be. that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. I seem to be the only one. Can you smell it, girl? That smells smell amazing. It? Okay, great, awesome. So I'm gonna add some water now. How do I do this? This way? Okay. It's really different from what I have. <laughs> Okay, great, perfect. So now I'm gonna add water. So this is about 400 ml actually, I'm eyeballing. Okay. So next I'm gonna add my fresh basil. So this is sweet basil. It's pretty similar to scent leaf, but it's not the same. It's actually the same species, but this is pretty different. So if you do not okay. have sweet basil, you can use scent leaf. Okay. But if you use sand leaf, you end up having that pepper soup flavor. Mm. And I don't think you want to go for that for now. Mm. Yeah. That's not what we're trying to achieve. Right. With this. So I'm going to let this boil. Then I take out all the vegetables and blend it into a puree before I pour it back into the soup. So back in Ghana, we have um, something we call light soup. And it's pretty similar to pepper soup, but the difference is just that your pepper soup has an array of spices, and ours has tomato in it and less spices. So the base is pretty much the same pepper, onion, 
and some ginger garlic, and we add a lot of tomato, even tomato paste. So it's pretty different, but it's kind of the same goal, light soup with spice and all that. So this is kind of in line with that. Okay. So now this is gonna boil, and we move to the next. Awesome. Yeah. So what's the next thing? So the next thing I'm gonna do is to serve, right? And for the serving, I'm serving in a, I don't know if it's a teacup or a coffee cup. It could That's be like, like a, a coffee cup. Coffee cup? Yeah, it looks okay, like a great. Cup. It's more like a cappuccino cup, right? So we are serving in this. And that's about it. It's pretty simple. It's just a starter, and it has to be simple, flavorful, and delicious. I know some people have some questions, and I'm ready to answer, so you can start asking questions while okay. this boils, because it's going to take so some time. So who's ready to ask Chef Kinora some questions? <laughs> Anybody? What? Oh. What? Hello, Chef. Good afternoon. My name is Chef Imarazi. Please, I want to ask. Do you need to debone? The past. The the past time. Okay. Hello, Chef. Hi. Please, I want to ask. Do you need to debone the chicken before? Um, it depends on how you like it. You can always keep the chicken in to add the same soup, like, um, end product. But for me, I prefer to chop it up so I can easily scoop. And I'm serving in a tea cup, coffee cup. So <laughs> I wouldn't want to have, like, a lot of bones, and I don't want to do this. So it's going to be with a spoon and scoop and enjoy. Yeah. Should we go for another question? Yes, sure. Okay. Anybody have any more questions? Okay. Good afternoon, Chef. Um, Hi. Good afternoon, Chef. My name is Atsunuke. I would like to ask, uh, why are you not putting spices in your um, soup? I was actually expecting this question. This is supposed to be like the first question because that's the most asked question. And first of all, ginger and the garlic are a form of seasonings as well, and salt is seasonings. But um, for spices, it depends on what you're making. But for this recipe, the chili does it for me, the ginger, is all good. Unless you are um, referring to a specific type of spice or seasoning. Not exactly. Yeah. I think it, you, you don't necessarily have to use all spices or some spices for every meal. Okay, please. Yeah, depends I, on the flavor you want to build. Yeah, there is this rule that, that the difference between soup and sauces is that for soup, you don't put garlic ginger for sauces. You put garlic ginger, whipping cream, and all salt. Can you please clarify on that? Right. Okay. So I think that rules kind of stays in. Um, I think a lot of Nigerians have that rules because when I prepare a recipe and I post it and I put, let's say, tomato in a soup or I put ginger garlic, I get a lot of comments that that's not how it's made. Like when I prepare um, okbono soup or I prepare okra soup and I put ginger garlic, they be like, okay, no, that's not how it's done. But yes, indigenously, if you want to prepare a specific indigenous recipe, yes, you can go by the rules, but there's nothing like, okay, rules and regulations in cooking. I mean, we put garlic and ginger in our soups back in Ghana. I'm sure a million countries do the same. Do you get it? So there are really no rules when it comes to cooking, unless you're preparing a specific indigenous type of cooking. Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much, Chef. Let's take one more so you can focus on the cooking for now. Good afternoon, Chef. Hi. Please, uh, this new introduction of putting the, a full onion and the tomato is, is strange to me. I'm saying it the first time. So, I, although I like the idea, but I want to know, it, does it have any other flavor, as in maybe if you chef cut it and put it, or you boil it the way you are doing it, what actually, difference does it yeah. actually have? Um, there is a little difference, I'll say, but we used to have arguments about that. Because indigenously, where I come from, when we are cooking... Uh, when we are preparing soups, we always put the onions, the pepper, the tomatoes in whole so it cooks before we grind because we use um, asanka, like uh, earthenware and the it has stone. I don't know if you people use that. Yeah, we use it to grind locally. So um, for most of our soup recipes, we, use, we cook it before we grind so it makes it easy to grind, basically. That's the whole method. But for my theory, it kind of changes the taste. I mean, 
if you boil it before you blend and pour it back in, you don't really have that tangy tomato taste because you've sort of cooked it out already before you blend and pour it in. Do you get it? And even when you blend fresh and you blend cooked, the consistency and the texture is different. Yeah, so that's it. So okay, that's so the last let's, question. Let's get back to the cooking for now. Okay, so I think it's about done. I'm going to blend. Can I have someone help me since I'm doing the cook along? <laughs> okay. So who would like to go up first to oh, help she's the already chef? overtaking you. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so what we are going to do is blend. Can I? Okay. Oh, stop it. I already did mine. <laughs> okay, thank you. Should I give you tissue? Okay, that's tissue there. Okay, so what I want you to do is to just pick the vegetables and put it here. So what are we going to do? We're going to grind. We're going to, We're going blend, to blend those yeah, and into then pour a it back into yeah. the soup. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think there's one more. Oh, it's two. Okay, great. Yeah. So, where should she blend it? In the same? Yes, everything. So, I'm just going to add a little water to aid blend everything together. So, that's about it. And this is a pretty simple recipe. In like minutes, you are done. I don't know how long we've been on it, but I've been doing a lot of Ten talking. minutes, maybe? I was talking along the line too, so. So let's say five. Yeah. It's pretty so simple. So what are we doing over here? So this is already made. Okay. Just to manage time. But okay. I didn't know it was going to be this fast. Okay. So it looks like this is not really relevant. So this is that already added yes. into this mm -hmm. so that's like the just finished in case product. people want to try okay and okay, confirm awesome. if it's legit or not <laughs> who's excited thing. to try it yes oh, it has you to guys be don't seem very excited oh, it has to be it has i think to i'm just going to eat it all it myself smooth. smooth yeah <laughs> that already smells so amazing I, I'm I'm so excited. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so should we take a few more okay, questions? I think it's fine since you're using the other one. So. Does anybody have any more questions for the chef? Okay. Well done, chef. Hi. Please, I would like to know if there is need to add some kind of oil in the sauce to make it tasty. Be it granola oil actually, or palm okay. oil. No. There is no, thing. no. Just like pepper soup. I don't think you add palm oil in pepper soup, right? Yeah. So it has to be fresh and light and healthy. So Any what we are going to do, you have to pour. So she's pouring Everything. the cooked, yeah. Everything. Yeah. So we pour it in. Yeah. So she's going to add a little water because it's slightly thick because of the tomato and the onion. Hello, Chef. Hi. Okay, my name is Zakana. Hi, yes. And why are you not covering your hair? Can the lady look cute? <laughs> Actually, it's, I'm not cooking for, um, how should I say, it's not like a catering service or a restaurant. So what has, what's supposed to be tasted was already made by the sous chefs. So they are already like, you know, nice and prepped. So the ones you will taste, is, is actually without this. So, yeah. Don't put me on the spot like that. <laughs> One more question before we go back to the cooking. Okay. Okay. Let's let someone in. Okay, so now, okay, yeah. Should I go? Is that how they, oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, an audience member wants to know what quantity of garlic and what quantity of ginger you put into the soup. 
So the grated ginger is about a teaspoon ginger. And the garlic, I use three cloves of garlic. Yeah. So you can always reduce or add these things. It's up to your palate. It's really simple. Okay, so this is gonna boil. So let's say this is ready. And this might take some time, so we can do the seven here okay. in case someone wants to try. Okay. So that's about it for the soup. Now I'm gonna do the seven. So you can easily serve it in a bowl. You don't necessarily have to serve it in a coffee cup. But it just makes it look nicer. Yeah, if you want to be fancy. Okay. So some more chicken. That's about it. Okay. So there you have it. And I'm just going to garnish with some basil. A lot of people ask me, so are they supposed to eat the leaves too? And I'm like, if you want to, it's edible. So, okay, so that's it for my chicken basil soup. Ready and served. So I'm moving to my next recipe. Thank you. Thank you. So for my next recipe is lemongrass-based fish and lemongrass alfredo sauce served with zobo pasta. Yeah, I know. So we're going to start with the zobo pasta because it will take some time. Okay, yeah, you can sit. Sorry. Oh, my God. So who wants to try the soup? Who wants to try it? Do you want to try it? Come and try it. Should we scoop it in a... I think we can turn it off now. Okay. I think that's about it. It's hot. Yeah. It's hot. <laughs> okay, Full so disclaimer, once you try it, you have to give us a review. <laughs> okay, so we're going to put you on the spot. What do you think? It tastes like pepper soup, actually. Yeah, really? It tastes like pepper soup. Thank you. Okay, yeah, sure. You can take it from here. Okay, so for my next recipe, whilst you are doing the tasting, I have filet grouper. So filet simply means boneless or deboned, if I should say. And okay, so what is this recipe we're going into? Lemongrass based fish and okay. lemongrass alfredo sauce with zobo pasta. Okay, zobo pasta. Yes, honey. Okay. <laughs> okay. So are we doing the zobo here? Saucepan, please. Oh, you like it? I think everyone knows what Zobo is, um, right? Yeah? Okay. No? Did I get a no? We've actually done a lot of stuff with Zobo. We've done Zobo slashes, Zobo cake, a whole lot. Zobo yogurt. It's beautiful. Okay, so I need saucepan for, my, for the Zobo pasta. Yeah. So should I use that one? I can do it here, right? I can just do it here. I can do it here, Tessie. It's already on, so I can just do it here. Yes. So for my Zobo, what I in the saucepan? More, more, more. Okay, so who, who wants to try it? <laughs> Be honest. With your judgments. Let me go deep into the okay. crowd. Let me, let me go to the other okay. side. How about Chef Raphael? Yeah. You're welcome. Uh, okay, so you have to give us you have to give us a review as a leading chef. So you have Chef Raphael Duntoye in your class. What? Can we get a round of applause for oh, Chef really? Raphael? Oh. Oh. Hi. His master class is tomorrow, so. Oh, interesting. It's very good. Very Are you good. being honest? No, no. I love the combination okay. of the spice. It's actually very good. Very Thank homey. you. Very, Thank very you. homey. Thank you. Thank you. You should put that on your CV. Oh, yeah. Check. <laughs> An A plus on Chef, Chef Raphael. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> 
Awesome. Okay, so for my pasta, I'm gonna start by boiling my zobo. So I already washed it, so you don't judge me. <laughs> so in goes, I'm just gonna let it boil. You can choose to cover or not. I just want it to be faster. So whilst that is boiling, I'm gonna start by chopping up my fish. Do you want to see me wash my hand again? Just in case. Okay. So I have my okay, fish here. So we're here. chopping up the fish now? Yeah, so I'm just gonna chop it up okay. in like good chunks so that we can all share. Okay. Oh, you wanna, okay, yeah, sure, come. I always forget yeah, think, about you girls. Yes. I think we should get, I think we okay, should get them, so you see we the should get their hands dirty. Yeah. Okay, so another and another. Okay, perfect. Okay, I think that's fine. All right, thank you. Yeah, you can get busy. Yeah. Okay, so I need a frying pan for my fish. Okay, thank you very much. So the next thing I'm gonna do is to bash this lemongrass. Back at home, I just use the leaves, but this is um, sort of close to the root, right? So it's a bit tough, you need to sort of activate the flavors. So what I'm gonna do is to just cut a good amount of that. And can you use something to just bash it up? There's no mallet, so we can probably use this. You can improvise, yeah. So you just like hit, hit, hit. Perfect. You got the muscle, good. Okay, great. That's a really good. Are we mashing that as well? Uh, okay, no, that's fine. Or just that? Yeah, just this. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Great, thank you very much. And you're, you're gonna do the same with the garlic too. Okay. I'm gonna join, come. Now she wants to do the garlic, she's jealous. <laughs> okay, that's fine, thank you very much. Okay, yeah, wash your hands. Yeah, let's put some muscle into that. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. It doesn't have to be really mushy, just enough to release the flavors. Okay, garlic crushed. Okay, you're done? You can use a tissue to... Okay, perfect. Okay, so what are we doing now? Okay, so now I think I'm gonna switch the pans. So this comes forward and this goes back because I'm gonna use here. So what I'm gonna do now is to throw in some butter in my pan, that's about 100 gram. Okay. And next I'm gonna throw in the garlic she crushed. And... So why butter, why not oil, why not olive oil, why not... Um, butter for flavor. Other? Okay. We all know butter has flavor. Okay. Oh, is it a... <laughs> Smells good already. So what I'm gonna do, my peppercorn. Oh, you took it away? The whole, the whole ones. It smells good, right? Oh, yay. That's butter and garlic for you. It just does magic. Yeah. Oh, that smells heavenly. Okay, so I'm gonna add a few peppercorn whole. Okay. So now I'm gonna add my fish, skin side down. Okay, I think I'll just leave this. Can I have a spoon? Tablespoon, please. No tablespoon. Can you smell it? Can you smell the lemongrass? No? That's a long journey, okay. All right. So what I'm gonna do is to baste it. Let them hear. The aroma is wow. Oh, yay. This is grouper, and I deboned it. So I'm just using the butter to cook it. So I just tilt the pan a bit and do this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna cook it one side down. I'm not gonna do both ways because I 
I just want to have it juicy inside. You can always cook your fish the way you want. It's like meat. Some people like it medium rare, others rare. Medium rare Africans, always. well done, overcooked. So yeah, that's about it. This is gonna keep going. So because these are small cuts, it's gonna go for about five minutes. I think that should do. Can you smell it now? I'm happy. Okay, so should we take a few more questions while yes, we're doing please. this? Yes, please. I need more. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Chef, lovely work, by the way. Um, I wanted to find out about the peppercorns. Why whole? Sorry? The peppercorns, why, why did you use them whole? Because I don't really want it to be potent in it. Okay. Yeah. Because, um, what's it called? Peppercorn can really change the flavor. So I just wanted to have, like, slight, yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Hello, Chef. My name is Barbara. Hi, Barbara. Um, what kind Sorry. of fish did you use? Okay. Sorry? What kind of fish did you Gupa. use? Gupa pile, yeah. So basically boneless. Thank you. Sorry. All right. Yeah. Um, Hello, Chef. My name hi. is Chef Titus. Okay. Um, this is your Zobo soup. What's the nutritional value Zobo of it? what? Zobo soup. It's actually pasta. Okay. I'm using penny. Okay. What's the nutritional value of it? Okay, so the, the reason why I'm using Zobo is more for the color. It's just as people use um, beetroot for their pasta to get that pinkish or reddish hue or even spinach to get the green or even squid ink to get the black. I'm using Zobo because... I'm African and I'm proud and I want the color to be red, pinkish. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, Chef. Oh my God, I'm dramatic. Hello, Chef. Hi. Yeah. Um, I have two questions. The first one is, you said you use Zobo. Zobo is a Nigerian flavor, it's a drink. So I want to ask if we can actually use other drinks like maybe Kunu and other refer. Oh no. Okay, it's fine. Let's take it out. So, can we have something to take it off? Um, you don't want to use kunu. Did you say kunu? Kunu, yeah, kunu. kunu. Okay, so kunu is millet, right? Yes, no. So, we have kunu. We have um, a lot of a lot of drinks. We have a lot of drinks. Okay, but yeah, we have a lot of drinks. So. <laughs> Are they colored? The whole point is to have that reddish hue okay. for the look. Okay. And so, millet, kunu, or um, what's it called? We can also Kula use it. Stuff, yeah, or not. Okay. And also, the aroma is coming, so, you know, it's spreading everywhere. So, I want to know if it's the fish or the ginger or the... <laughs> everything just the, you know, or the... Okay, the butter, all yes. the spices. We want to know the one that is generating the atmosphere. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so it's the garlic and the butter. That's what's doing the miracle. Yeah? Okay, great. Okay, so what are we doing next? So next, I wanted to check on my pasta, but my zobo is not boiling. So can we turn the heat up a bit? Okay, since this is going, I'm gonna start with my lemongrass alfredo sauce. So what I like to do is, so can I have a pan, please? A pan. We can actually use the same pan, just clear the stuff, more flavor. So what I like to do is I just take the normal recipes or recipes that already exist and just add my own flair to it. Like I recently made, can I, where can I pour this? Where can I pour this? I want to use, should I pour it there? Will you help me? Okay, great. So I recently made um, dang kwa, right? I don't know if you know Dankwa. Right, and what I did, we call it Zoe or Dakwa in, in my country. So what I did was to do the regular process, like the ingredients, everything, and mold it into balls, and melted chocolate, and drizzled it all over it. So it's like a chocolate truffle, but when you bite into it, you have the Dankwa there. So it's 
practically are old recipes, but I just try to make it interesting. Because you don't want to be eating the same food every day. I don't know, maybe you guys can, uh, I can't do that. <laughs> okay, I have my own question for you while you're cooking. Right, I want to take this off. How do you learn, how did you get into yeah. cooking and how did you learn your, how do you learn your recipes? I actually do not learn it. It just comes to me. What, like trial and error in your Not dream? try and error. I, okay, what I do is I like to process flavors, right? I think I'm very good at that. I know if, just as you can sort of foretell that garlic and butter will definitely smell good, it's the same way I can sort of tell that cream sauce with lemongrass and fish will definitely do well. I think I call myself a recipe developer, so this is what I do. I, I'm, I'm very, should I say creative? Yeah, thank you. Okay, so for my lemongrass Alfredo sauce, what I'm gonna do is to add butter. That's huge. Knife. You really Knife. love your butter, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna add butter. So this is like a tablespoon in the pan. Is it on? No, it's not. Sorry. Then I add the adabashed lemongrass and my garlic. Can I have a spoon, please? Let me use. Can I have another spoon? Okay, thank you. So I'm just going to add garlic puree. It's easy this way. So that's pureed garlic. Yeah. Okay. So let the butter melt. I don't know, but I think the lemongrass leaves are more potent than the stalk. But for now, we can manage with this. Okay, so the next, I'm going to add my cooking cream. Okay, should we get the other, the other, your, your sous chef yeah. on stage can you come? as well? Yeah. Is your cooking cream good? No, it's sort of. Okay, so whilst we wait for the cooking cream, I'm going to put it aside. Is it working? No. Do you have milk? Give me milk. Okay, so then let's proceed with our pasta. Water is boiling. Can I have a strainer? Strainer. So, so the, the zobo is done now, isn't yes. it? Okay. Yes. Okay, great. So who's going to see it? Should I do it? You know what? Yes. Let's, can you put it here? Mm. You want to see it? Okay. Who's going to do it? Will you do it? Okay, great. Careful. It's hot. Okay. Gosh, please be very careful. Allow, allow. She's learning. You guys are mean. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, great. Okay, now where can we put the rest of the leaves? Because we need the same pan to cook. Yeah. So you can tip it here. Help. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, okay, let's take a few more questions. Okay, more questions, please. Okay, it has to be clear. I need a saucepan. Hi, Chef. My name is Jane. Okay, let's uh, could you out. tell us about your journey? Okay, so the, the reason why food, I started, first of all, my goal is to fundamentally change how the world appreciates and engages with African food. Mostly when you talk about African food, people kind of classify it as um, unhealthy or it doesn't really look good in terms of presentation. But trust me, our foods are very delicious. And I think African food in 
African food basically in general is underrated, if I should say. If you go to any other like, part of the world, if I should say, um, if you go to the States, you find Indian food, you find Chinese, you find Japanese. Here in Nigeria, you find Indian, Chinese, Japanese, Western, everything. But if you go there, it's kind of difficult for you to find a decent African restaurant. You know that. So the whole point is to kind of push African food and make it relevant. So that's how I started. I felt I'm going to applause, please. make an impact. OK, next question. OK. okay great. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Chef. Please, my question is, uh, in place of the Zobo leaf, can we use sorghum bicolor? Sorry? In place of the Zobo leaf, the Zobo that you're using, you said you, you are using it because of the color. Yes. Can we use sorghum bicolor? Zobo what? Sorghum, sorghum leaf, sorghum. Sorghum leaf, OK. Yes. In this place, we call it boroporo. That's what we call it here in Nigeria. What is, what is it? It is sorghum. The leaf of sorghum. The leaf of sorghum. The same Sorry, sorghum. I have no idea about what you're talking about. I don't know if I'm not hearing you properly. All right. I'm talking about sorghum. Did you, you know sorghum? Sorghum. 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 What's sorghum? Sorghum. Sorghum? What? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm I talking know, about. I know sorghum. Sorry, that's what I'm saying is the pronunciation, different accents. Oh, okay. So I'm talking about the leaf. Can we use it as well as um, in place of the zobo leaf? Okay. Because um, I've seen a Ghanaian using it to make that rice. Actually, we use it for wache. I don't oh. even know wache. It's the combination of rice and beans. Sorry. And yeah, and I think you can actually be adventurous. But you see, the, the sorghum leaves doesn't really have a strong um, color to sort of infuse into the pasta as zobo. It's pretty light when you soak it in water or boil it. So I wouldn't really, maybe you might get a pinkish color, but you, I don't think it's wrong. Because even in place of the sorghum leaves, when I was praying wache once, I used um, beetroot. And people were like, oh my god, how dare you? And I'm like, yes, I did it. So yeah, you can. It's not wrong. OK, so for the pasta, I want someone to pour the pasta in to the Zobo drink. OK, you do it. So you just pour it directly in there. So what we're doing is instead of boiling the pasta in regular water yes. and salt, yes. we're boiling it in the Zobo water. Yes, and okay. this process is also like sort of cheating. I could do the whole pasta process from scratch by using egg, egg yolk or egg um, with the flour and the oil and salt. No, it's fine. She wants to feed the nation. Not everything. <laughs> so instead of doing it from scratch, I decided um, to just boil it in this because it's the same uh, sort of like effect. So yeah, that works. So now my cooking cream is here. What I'm going to do is, is it on? Yes. OK, so you're supposed to pour the cooking cream in it. He's in charge of the lemongrass alfredo sauce. Yes. Yeah, so what kind of cream, cream is this? Yes, cooking cream, right? Oh, you did a trick, I know. <laughs> Chef Kinora, what kind of cream is this? Oh, this cooking cream. Can I have a spatula, please? Yeah, give me that one. OK, so I'm going to stir it. So I still left my lemongrass leaf in it, or stock, just to still infuse the flavor. Now I'm going to season with pepper, just light, and salt. So both to taste? Yes. No. Okay. And the last thing I'm going to add, can someone open it for me? I'm going to use Parmesan cheese. Initially, when I was developing the recipe, I didn't want to use Parmesan cheese because I was like, OK, if we Africans are trying, it would be like, oh my God, why am I going to get Parmesan cheese, right? But I felt, okay, if I'm saying Alfredo sauce, then original Alfredo sauce has Parmesan. So let me just be real. But it can be optional too, because you're still going to get the same consistency since you use cooking cream, right? So if you don't have Parmesan cheese, just scratch it. You, you don't need it. it. Okay, so I'm just going to grate it. 
like so. Oops. That happens. Kitchen disaster all the time. Okay, so that's about it for me. Thank you very much. What? Okay. So this is ready. And what I'm going to do Already? is... Yeah, yeah. That was super fast. So I'm just going to let it sit for a while. I'm going to start with my Tagonat tart. Because that's like the hero of the show, okay? So we all know Tiger Nuts, right? Can I move here? We all know Tiger Nuts, right? There are some myths about it. I don't know if you guys know any. Okay, who wants to share? I'm interested. So Tiger Nuts going in. It's already washed. My sous chefs helped. It happens, it's fine. So we're gonna add some water. Can you please fetch water? So I want to hear the myths about tiger nuts. 15 minutes, don't kick me out, please. Any myths about tiger nuts? Okay. Yes. Yes. Myths. Actually, you can turn it off. Okay, I think you're gonna to have to help us with this, Chef Kenora. I don't think anyone knows any. Someone is. Okay, one person yeah, more, over there. More, more, more. Um, one of the myths about, hi, I'm Chef Oge. Okay. So one of the myths about tiger nut is that it's an aphrodisiac. Oh, is it? Ah, I've yeah. heard that oh, one. Oh, wow. I've heard that one. Really? Okay, so I heard it's good for lactating mothers too, because it sort of helps with the whole boob thing. And I'm not really sure about the aphrodisiac. I've heard that one. I have people but in my I office heard... drinking it like all the time. Thank you. <laughs> okay, can you hear me? So I heard it's actually good for men with low sperm counts. Can I say that here? It's healthy. I mean, as in I'm saying good stuff. So yeah, it helps with men with low sperm counts. So if you consume a lot of it. But I heard, that's why I said myth. So I don't know if there are any doctors in the house to confirm or nutritionists. Are there any doctors yeah. or nutritionists so in the it house? it does a lot, actually. Are you a doctor or nutritionist? Okay, so that's about it. We are going to strain it and start cooking. Do you have another mix? My name is Adiza Saeed Lawa. This cooking cream, is it yogurt or not? Sorry? Oh, no, this, it's not yogurt. It's not It's yogurt. just more like full fat um, cream. Oh, okay. So if you add lemon or other stuff, it's not going to curdle. Oh, okay. So it's not milk. It's, it's more like milk with high fat content, oh, okay. if I should say. Okay, yeah. So, so it's not yogurt. Yogurt is more tangy. Okay, so we already have cooked hibiscus. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so let's just bring it. Can I have a tablespoon, please? Oh, is this where you're straining it? We don't have like a... All right. Can I have a tablespoon, please? So since I have like 15 minutes or less, what I'm going to do is... Can I have a tablespoon? Okay, so that's you. like making tiger nut milk. Sorry? That's like making tiger nut milk. Yeah. So okay. you basically use tiger nut milk. Because the trick with tiger nut okay. milk is that when it comes in contact with heat, it thickens. So instead of doing tarts and using custard or any form of fancy filling, you can just use tiger nuts, which is healthy and delicious. Okay. So I'm just going to serve my fish and my hibiscus. And I just want to do this fun bit. And can we turn this off, please? It's overflowing. Can someone help turn off the gas? Can I have my spoon? Another spoon, please. Spoon, please. Spoon. Spoon. Okay, so what are we doing now? We're plating okay, the I'm pasta. Okay, I'm just plating the pasta and the okay. fish. So yes, actually, with the fish, what, what you usually do is after cooking, when it's hot, you just... Um, add some salt to it so it quickly d dissolves because of the heat but because I was talking too much I forgot to add the salt but it doesn't ruin anything there's salt in this and it's going to be amazing together okay great so now this I'm just going to place it here I prefer using shell pasta because when I'm plating it's easier and prettier I don't know. Yeah. I don't know okay. 
So this is pretty rough. And now I'm going to add my fish. I'm looking for the good looking one. Okay, this is about it. So I'm going to place it here. And usually I'll use the lemongrass leaves for garnish. But since we don't have, I'm going to use my basil just to make it pretty. You know, you eat with your eyes first before you taste and all that. So it has to look pretty all the time. Okay. So that's about it for my lemongrass fish and lemongrass Alfredo sauce. Okay, can we get a round of applause? Thank you. Can so, everyone see that? <laughs> yeah? Okay, so for the tiger nut tart, what I'm gonna do is pulse. I have Oreos here. So I'm using Oreos for the base. You can either use digestive biscuits. I don't know if you call it digestive biscuits. Yeah. Or any kind of crackers you want. But I'm using Oreo because it's gonna look white and black. So it's pretty cool. And I'm gonna pulse this. I'm running out of time, please. Blender. We already have the already made one, so. But you want to show the process? Can, yeah, just a quick process. Okay, should we take a few more questions while we're working on this? All Chef right. Kenora? Yes. A few sure. more questions yeah, while sure. you're doing that? More, please. Does anybody have any questions? Go to this side. So, okay, you will pulse it over there. And now where's my milk, my target nut milk? That's it? Okay. Um, good evening, Chef. Hi. Um, I noticed you didn't add salt in the pasta. Why? Then also, what can I use in place of the cooking cream? What if I don't have cooking cream? What okay, so I if you're going to add cheese to it, right, then I think if you use milk, it can sort of thicken to that same consistency. But also, you can decide to um, do it like, a, what's it called? Uh, you, like when you're doing mac and cheese, the base, you can use the butter, the salt, the black pepper with the flour, and stir before adding milk just to thicken it. You have a question? Okay, what, can I use um, custard? Uh, no. Cornstarch? No. Corn flour, like cornstarch. As a thick oh, one. okay, cornstarch. Yes. Um, I think you need a creamy consistency. So cornstarch will just make it like a starchy jelly like texture and you want it to be like creamy just use milk if you don't have can we have this for my also she nut? said why did you not put or salt in the pasta saucepan? sorry why was there no salt in the pasta she asked oh okay yeah i mean it's optional you can always add salt or take out so and the zobo is very tangy as well i'm not really sure about the combination of the salt and the tanginess yeah and also, the, the reason why I use the zobo for the fish is that, you know, usually people squeeze, um, what's it called, lemon on fish, right? So the zobo sort of balances that whole tangy flavor. Good evening, right. Chef. Hi. I'm here. My Hi. name is Ben. Hi, Ben. So I would like to ask a question on uh, food styling. Right. All right. I, I know you're a food stylist. So right. can you please share some tips on the equipment that is basically needed? for proper food styling and um, the prerequisite that you need to know before you become a proper uh, food stylist. And okay, uh, I think, first of all, aside, um, it has to go some more. It has to be really gritty. So don't blend, just pulse it. Okay, yeah, sorry. So aside um, everything, first thing is you need a good camera. Yeah, and also some surfaces, a variety actually. Um, Usually don't go for smooth ones, you should go for textured ones. And for plating, you always need like props and stuff that will make it um, pretty, basically. So let's say if you are, um, what's it called? If you are styling a jollof thing, image or whatever, I'm talking fast because I'm under pressure. I was told to speed up. Okay, so you, you, can, you don't necessarily have to chop carrots and green bell pepper and put it in uh, for it to look stylish. It's actually the things you put around it or how you make it soft and, you know, just play around with it. And you can always build. You don't just put everything together at once. So you start with it being plain, then you put a napkin, then you put cutlery, then, you know, you keep it rustic. Yeah. You don't have to be staged. Okay, great. Okay. So I'm going to start with my tiger knot tart. So first I have my saucepan. Then I'm going to pour my milk. So tiger knot's milk, actually. 
So next, condensed milk. So I'm using condensed milk because it's gonna, it's low? Okay. So I'm gonna use, tiger, um, sorry, condensed milk for my sweetener instead of sugar because it's creamy and sweet as well. And I'm gonna add my milk powder. So I'm eyeballing, I'm not using measurements because we have to be quick. So this milk powder. So next, I'm gonna add vanilla essence, just a few drops. I like to add it at the end, but as I said, we are in a rush. So I have vanilla pods. So this is what it looks like, and it smells amazing. And it's the same as vanilla, but this is like the natural stuff, and this is like, you know, pretty like much processed. So what I like to do is, can I get a chopping board, a knife? Okay, what I do is I just split it into half and sort of scrape the pods out and put it in the um, tiger nut milk. So it has that pretty black spots in it when it's set. So when you cut, it's not gonna be just white. It's gonna have like pretty, you know, imperfections in there. So I have my chopping board. I'm just gonna cut and create a slit and scoop it out like that. Okay, so this is what it looks like. So I'm just gonna put it in and add the whole stalk as well. Which one is this? Can I have another spatula or just wash it? Help, please. So the thing with tiger nut is it starts to curdle as soon as, not curdle, thicken, actually, as soon as it hits the fire. So I need to stir it fast so it doesn't become lumpy. It's gonna be like smooth, custard-like texture. And with the vanilla and the condensed milk and the milk powder, you know how it's gonna taste already? I like to process things before I kind of do it. Spatula, please. Thank you, Chef. Okay, great. So I'm just gonna give it a quick stir. So with time, it starts to thicken. And with the vanilla, it smells so good. It smells like vanilla ice cream, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have one more question from an audience member. If we do not have the, uh, the leaf. Lemongrass. The lemongrass, can we use spring onion? Is that spring onion? Yeah. Actually, the lemongrass has a distinct smell. And so, uh, I wouldn't say spring onion. You want to go for that lemony, yeah. Spring onion is more like onion, yeah. So if you don't have it, look for it. <laughs> okay, so now, tart pan, please. I'm going to get you busy. Okay, yeah, sure, start it. great. Okay, we have three more minutes. <gasps> so we're gonna try and breeze through this really quick. Okay, so we have the crushed Oreos and I'm gonna pour the butter. We're supposed to pulse it together, but we can do that. Can I have a fork to just sort of stir it around? Yeah, give me a spoon, okay, great. So you just give it a quick stir. Trust me, this is the recipe you want to see. Don't let them kick me out, please. <laughs> so the butter is like a binding agent? Yeah, it's sort, of, sort of gonna make it gritty and also add flavor to it as well. Just like making cheesecake. You need the crumbs to be, you know, buttered and it will help when you put it in the fridge to set. So after doing this, this is pretty much rough. So you just pour it in the tart pan and you spread it out. What I like to do is to use a short glass to just sort of level it up and get the edges done and even. So, this is almost like that. And now, when my tiger nut, oh, it's about to thicken, actually. It's, the consistency is changing. Yeah, you just pour it on top, and you put it in the fridge. Actually, at this point, you put it in the fridge, it set for about 30 minutes minimum, before you actually pour your tiger nut milk. I like to say pudding, because it's thick. So after this, Okay, I think we can go now just to give them this demonstration. Can I have it? Thank you. So what I'm gonna do is to pour it on top like that. That looks awesome. Thank you, I'm actually supposed to take the vanilla pods out, but. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, great. We'll 
don't blame you on the time constraints. Uh, no, yeah, we don't yeah, blame you. Yeah, that's all about it. So that's this is what it looks like. So it goes in the fridge like this. That smells and amazing. And it comes out like that. So it's set, right? Thank you. So I should put it here. Uh, I'm gonna pop it out. So I'm gonna pop it out, okay? Ooh, do Please we get to on. give everybody to taste? Okay. Oh my God, wait, wait. Yes? I feel like this no, is wait, the loudest wait, I've heard your voices wait, yeah. all day. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> the okay, free food comes out come and the voices off. go up. Uh, I'm cracking it. Oh my God. Okay. That looks awesome, Chef Kenora. Thank you. Actually, you guys need to try this. I don't know where I should cut it from. I don't want to cut it in front of the sink. Can I move it, move it, move it? Yeah, we have to drag it. If we lift it at this point, since I've taken the pan off, I'm gonna end up cracking it up. Okay, so this is what it looks like. So who's gonna cut? Are you very good? <laughs> okay, 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 so, okay, you have to go from the middle and go down okay perfect oh no you have to tilt like this like cake sorry i put crumbs on you so like that okay maybe let's get the sous chefs to cut it so we okay. can make it quicker and we can we can hand it out to everybody on their way out how does that sound okay you don't sound excited anymore all right so, so that's about it, it my tiger nut oreo tart Thank you for having me. It was Thank amazing. Thank you so much, Chef Kenora, all the way from Ghana. So how did you start food blogging and how did you start your career, your culinary career? How did you go into that? Okay, so I started by snapping and posting on Snapchat. So what I do is I basically snap my whole cooking process and style it the way I want. And the problem was I wanted to put um, or like post images of African food in a nice way. Like you, if you go to restaurants, you get like nice westernized meals. I just wanted to have African food plated differently, basically. So that's how I started. And people started asking me for recipes, questions, and jobs started coming in. And then you yeah. created your own culinary company. Yes. How long did that take you? Um, how did you just long. set up a? How did you just set it's up a culinary school? It's been two years so far. Oh, okay, wow. so for the culinary school, it hasn't really started yet. So I started with a digital food network okay. where I post um, food content Okay, on, which look amazing, online. by the Thank way. Thank you. And then I started producing content for food brands Okay. Yeah, across um, Africa as well. So yeah, that's how it started. Okay, so would you say following your parents' footsteps led you to your current career? Not necessarily. I don't think I really followed. I think at some point I just felt, okay, this is what I wanted to do without even thinking of the fact that my dad or my granddad were like into the food industry. I just started out of passion because I developed the passion for it along the way. Not because my dad was sort of like influencing me in any way, but it's because that's what I wanted to do. Okay, yeah. so now what would you say the biggest distinction between Nigerian food and Ghanaian food is? I think the cooking process and okay. the seasoning. If not, it's pretty much the same because you both have amala. We have kokonte, pretty much the same. Banga soup, oh. we have abenkwai, it's the same thing. It's, it's just like the different seasoning or um, cooking process. It's pretty much the same. Awesome, awesome. It's the same thing across West Africa, actually. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Kinora. It was Thank such a you. pleasure having Thank you on you stage. I absolutely enjoyed the class and I had so much fun. Great. Thank you very much. <laughs>